So hi there guys, welcome back to Sea Eye Fishing Guernsey. Been a uh, while since I put a video up and it's really down to the weather to be honest and I've been pretty busy as well. But uh, the weather, yeah, hasn't been great over here. We've had wind, we've had rain, we've had pretty much everything. To say we're uh, in May, the weather's terrible. Still cold, I'm open next month. June we have a bit of an improvement to be honest because uh, the fishing's been pretty slow as well really. Been out with the lures a few times, I'm blanked. So yeah, I thought today I'd just come and um, do a tutorial of a float um, setup for you if you're new to fishing or uh, looking to take your um, youngster out fishing for the first ever time. So I see the mackerel season's on the horizon now. Well, there's a few mackerel being caught as well now at the moment, I've heard of on the float. So I thought it'd be a good time to maybe put a video like this of a setup of a float of how to uh, do it, so I say if you're new to it. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, show you the float and all the bits and pieces you need to set up the float in two seconds. Uh, yeah, if you can hit the like button as you come in, uh, subscribe, turn the notifications um, on and the bell so you don't miss a video. Share on all platforms to put the uh, channel out there, that'd be really, really appreciated because we're uh, closing on 200 subs now. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with that. So I haven't put a video out for a while, I've had a few new subscribers, so I can't um, wish for more really. I'm really happy with uh, the support. So yeah. I'm going to uh, get the, uh, like I said, the bits and pieces and I'll go back to you in two seconds to see our fishing guernsey. So uh, guys, I'm going to show you the um, few bits and pieces you need um, to set up the float, just to start off with. All we're going to be using is a Shimano Exchange 4000 size reel. Might be a little bit too big for float fishing, but you can use anything from a 2000 to 3500, but it's just like I said, a tutorial to show you. And then again, like I said, you're taking your nippers out. Just a standard rod like so. This one, perfect for float fishing. You can go up to, I, I don't know, an ounce and a half, two ounces. Nice and small. So perfect for, say, if you're taking your, I don't know, five or six year old on the pier, uh, for like, say, a mackerel or a long nose. Yeah, get the rod on, simple as that. Make sure it's nice and secure, so you don't want to be casting out. And uh, the end of the rod comes off, so I've done that uh, many a times before in the past. And all it is, as simple as getting your rod in there, as simple as it gets, hold the rod, tie it on nice and tight, like so, make sure it's nice and tight so it's nice and secured, like so, so it can't go anywhere. And then all you're going to do is get your line, take it off there for two seconds, get your line and pass it through the uh, bell arm, like so, like that. Uh, you want it to go through, so it's on the actual thing that you can see there, so you can feed it through. And all you want to do is take your bell arm off, like so. Yeah, back in there. And all you're going to do is get your line and feed it all the way through the eyes like so. So I'm going to get this uh, done guys, I'll get back to you with the uh, float in two seconds. So there we are, guys, we fed our line all the way through every um, eye. Let's come out like so, there we go, as simple as that. So once you've done that, put the rod down for two seconds. It's going to show you um, what you need for the setup. What you need is a, whatever uh, float you feel comfortable with. I like sort of nice and light, so that way I find it's probably down to um, preference. By the light of the uh, float, when the fish comes to uh, take the um, hook, it doesn't get any resistance from the float. Sometimes when the hook, uh, the float's too big, maybe they feel the resistance to the float and leave it. They won't uh, take the bait. So normally that's, that's a good tip. The smaller the float, the better the light of the float. And all you want, some beads, small hooks. I say these are 2-0 Aberdeen hooks. That's all you want, maybe a 1-0 hook. You don't want anything too big because it's with a mackerel and uh, garfish or long nose, they're small uh, mouth fish. And all you want is some swivels, as simple as that. And then I'll show you after I have a tie on a stop knot. Uh, at the end of the, uh, once I've got the float all set up. So I'm gonna get this uh, all ready guys. I'll get back to you in two seconds. So uh, guys, we're gonna start setting the float up now. So you wanna do it first, get your bead, first bead, like so. Yeah, like so, like that. That's the first bit. 
and you grab your float. There's one tip I can give you. If you're using braid like I am on this reel, I'm for the line there. There's a simple tip. You'll be there forever trying to get the float through braid, especially when it's uh, damp. It's an absolute nightmare. So all I like to do is just get some normal mono, any mono, preferably I'd say 15, 20 pounds. Do anything too light because again it will um, buckle really easily. So all you want to do is make a loop nice and simple, a simple knot. There we go. Like so, feed it through the knot. Give yourself enough for tap and pull nice and tight. There we go. So it ends up like that. Simple, but really, really effective. Save you a lot of time. And we change the float because I've misplaced the other one somehow in the shed. I don't know what I've done with it, but there we go. And then all it is, is literally get your float, there we go, straight through. Look how simple that goes on. There we go. And that is simple. If you're there with the braid, you can try it with the braid, just to, uh, I can try it with the braid just to show you, but I'll be here forever. But like I say, if you want to try it with the braid, be my guest. Simpler, look how simple that came through there. You ain't gonna get any simpler. And then literally pull the nut through. And there we are, easy. Nice little simple tip. So I say like mono, maybe 15, 20 pound. Like I say, if you use anything thinner, it's just gonna be an absolute nightmare. So then all you wanna do is get another bead. I'll show you. I say, it's only to show you guys why the weather's a bit rubbish, just to get a video out there for you. I said, with the mackerel coming in, if you want to uh, know how to set a float up, it's something uh, you'll be interested to watch, hopefully. There we go. Another bead, it's got two beads, a float. And then the next thing to do, is get your half ounce weight. I say, you want to match up the weight with the um, float. You can, any tap shop you go into, you can, if you're new to them, ask uh, the person at the counter what float uh, weight uh, it can take. You don't want uh, too heavy of a weight because the float's just gonna sink and you're never gonna know if you've got to uh, fish. So there we go, simple as. Then we got another bead. Right so, there we go. So it's starting to actually come to a shape now. Like right, so, there we go. And then the next part. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside there, guys, but it is howling. It's blowing at least a force seven to go force eight over it's been like that all day. So then what you want to do, you can use any size um, swivel. But again, like I said before, Try and make it as lightweight as possible. And then all you're doing, all I like to do, give yourself enough attack for braid line on your knee. You can see that. Or one. Like so, do maybe five or six turns. And all I like to do for my knots is literally go through, through the first eye. You see that? There we go. So it's through. And all I like to do, so simple, get your knot and then go through once, back through, a little bit of saliva, so it's like so. So you go back through the first loop, bit of saliva just to wet the braid, and then it's literally as simple as that. So literally, that would never ever slip. It's a really, really easy and effective knot but it works really well. I've never had it fail yet, so it definitely works for me. But whatever you feel happy with doing, I say it's uh, for new uh, commerce to fishing, for, like float fishing, just what I uh, do and use. And all you want to do is cut your tag off. So you know, you've got a nice, neat knot. So there we go, I say, again. So literally, that's what it should look like, like so. Okay, and all you want to do next, and here's the line again, it's going to knock this tag off from before. Start that in a second. 
and then all I'm using, again, I'll say you can use whatever you want uh, for trace line. But there we go, I've got fluorocarbon, 20 pound. Fluorocarbon is an absolute uh, amazing uh, line to use because you can't see it in the uh, water, it just disappears. You can use normal mono, but like I say, it's a bit more expensive, fluorocarbon, but again, I'd say, with my experience, I would uh, use it any day over anything else, to be honest. You can use 10 pound, uh, 10 pound mono, that's the equivalent of probably 20 pound fluorocarbon. So that's less likely to be seen in the water. So this will be your trace line. So literally exactly the same as what I just did with the last knot. So that's literally, you can do as many, well, I normally do six or seven, turn, you can do it however you want, I'll show you like that. Whichever is easier for you. So you'd, like I say, can your six, like I say, there you go, you got your loop there. So like I say, literally through that loop, exactly the same as before in the last one. And give yourself, and then you got your other loop there, look, and there's literally through. There you are. So like so, look. So you've gone back through the uh, circle there, and there's literally a bit of saliva. Again, like so. There we go, back through, and pull nice and tight. And that is a lovely knot. So you can do whatever knot you like. You can do, you haven't got to overcomplicate things. Just do the simple things and it will work. And these scissors are hopeless. There we are. There we are. So then, I like to give myself not too much of a um, trace. So you've got your swivel there. Very efficient. Give yourself, I'd say, yeah, about 60 centimetres or so. There we are. So, there we are from the swivel there, to there, to your trace line. So that's come together nicely there. There we are, you've got your float, got your trace line. I'm just gonna tie off the hook now. And we're nearly ready to go fishing. I said before we're using the Aberdeen uh, size two hooks. So you can use, I'd say they're probably pretty much the right size, maybe a one it all, all depends really. So there we go, nice small hook. And it's exactly the same. Through the eye of the hook, like so. Give yourself enough to do your six turns. So three, four, five, six. Through the loop, and give yourself as much. There we are. Through the loop again. I think we give myself much room. There we are. We got there in the end. There we are. Like I say, it's live up. You want to match them up at the same time, so otherwise you'll end up with a big loop in the middle and it won't look very good. So then, simple as, nice and tight, pull down, so it's all, yeah, perfect knot. Let's see if we can get these scissors to work again. So that is, that's pretty much it. I say, small rod, then all you want to do, so there's the setup. I'll show you. And again, hook your float, your hook. And all you want to do after that is get your rope, get your bail on, flip it back over, like so. How much room in here? And then I was going to show you how to do a stop now. We're going to tighten that up. I say you can use whatever rod you want. I say I'm doing it for like beginners, but anyone that's watching this video, you can use any spinning reel. If you're, if you're good at, um, it's good. If you're into uh, bass session, uh, a normal spinning rod would be absolutely perfect for this. So there we are, all nice and ready to go. 
and then I haven't got any actual stoppers, but you can get a little um, stoppers up before you start. You can, uh, again, you go to your tackle shop, ask for some stoppers for float fishing. They give you get a little blue uh, packet normally from Mixed Fishing Supplies if you're from Guernsey. And they're little, um, I did have some in here, but I've got a clue where they are. But they come with a little uh, packet, and you'll come with a little, they're like a little bubber, that kind of thing. And before you start, You'll um, run it up the line, so before you put anything on, put your um, stopper through the line that you start with, and then feed the stopper onto the line halfway up, and that gives you your stop nut. But I'm just going to show you a simple way if you haven't got any stoppers. So get some cat gut, like so. Stick it off. There we go. And then I was going to show you this. This be to um, show your depth for your float fish. So you get your mono, like so. So get your line. You again, preference whatever you want to do, not wise. So there we go, like so. All I do is literally a simple knot, like so. So like that. And I'll go back round at the other way. Behind there. Bang. Like so. You can do this three, four times. Just to give you that, um, I say the stopper. So you'll end up like that. It's simple. You can use again, like I say, whatever knot you want. And then just leave yourself some tags. And discard the other bit. So then you will end up like so. That's your stopper. That's to show the depth what you want to be fishing at. So as simple as that, like I say that will slide down. Handle. Yeah, so, so you got your float. And then this will slide all the way down. See it there? There we go. That will slide down to your float and sit there so the, it can't go through the bead. So that will show your depth. So that will sit there. So when it hits the water, that will stop. So you set yourself at three foot, the bait will sit at three foot. Six foot, it will sit at six foot. For long nose, I'd say in between, I don't know, uh, six to ten foot, maybe. Macro a lot deeper. Uh, they're a lot deeper um, feeding fish. So whatever you're fishing for, I say deep for mackerel, probably, I'd say for mackerel, it's all, it depends whether it's the fish, whichever way the fish are um, feeding from. 20 foot, 15, 20 foot for mackerel, and uh, for long nose, garfish, six to 10 foot. You can just vary it to find the fish pretty much. So that is literally as simple as it is. I say you got your float there and everything. Nice, easy setup, I say for beginners. So while the weather's rubbish, there's something to do. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to use this with the nipper in the next few days when the wind uh, dies off. We're gonna have plenty more content to come. I said hopefully, uh, hoping next weekend, I wanna get out before next weekend, uh, maybe on the kayak, or maybe do a bit of bass fishing, maybe until the floats out on the pier. Next week, by next weekend, I'm hoping to go over to Herm, do a bit more bass fishing over there. So yeah, there's been plenty more content to come. I say, I haven't made a video for a while because the weather's been absolutely naff. So I thought I'd do this for you guys today. So you enjoy the video, guys. If you hit that like button, subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. I say that's the float set up. Only on a small run. But hopefully it's helped you. I say if you're new to fishing. I'm going to catch you on the next one. It's been CI Fishing Guernsey.